Hey guys, this video is going to be part of the 49 Killer Golang project playlist on my channel where I have built projects in the increasing level of difficulty and there are 49 projects right now and this project I'll add somewhere towards the beginning because this is an easy project. This project is meant for beginners. We'll be building a stock market scraper which will scrape the Yahoo website for some particular stock market tickers and we'll display that information in a terminal and also write it to uh, a CSV file. So in case you want to learn how to scrape information using Kali, how to write it to a CSV file and how to display it to the terminal, all of these three things you'll learn a lot in this particular video. Just make sure you also check out all the other projects in this series. On my channel is also a link for the Discord community which is the official community for this channel and on the Discord we discuss a lot of things about Everything that we're learning, Golang, Rust, Artificial Intelligence, System Design, everything that this channel is all about, you'll get a nice community to help you learn more. So in case uh, you haven't joined, make sure you join it. Now a quick demo of how this tool is going to work. We'll run go run main.go. As you can see, we're going to finance.yahoo.com slash quote slash the name of the company or the ticket price in case like for example, WMT is Walmart, MMM is the 3M company, INTC is Intel. So similarly, we'll go to finance.yahoo.com and scrape the ticket prices for all these companies and you'll get all of the data in your terminal. At the same time, you'll see this file been created. It's called the stocks.csv file. It will have all the data. So here you'll learn how to write something to a CSV file as well, something that are not covered before. So let's get started. We will start by creating a new directory and I will say go stock scrape per yt for youtube and i will cd into it and here i will say go mod in it and this will initialize our mod file that will help us manage all the external packages by the way this project is going to be on my github profile akhil sharma i'm akhil sharma 90 on github in case you don't find the link in the description make sure you go to to my github and find it there so as you can see it created a new go.mod file for us we we'll open this up in vs code you could be using any other code editor not a problem and here we will create a main.go file okay in the main.go file uh, now this file is the most important in any golang project and as you can see, we also have our go.mod. So uh, for scraping, I will need a package called Kali. So I'll just go ahead and get it right now. So the way to do it is go get and you have to put the exact link of that package. So in my case, it's github.com slash Kali, go Kali slash Kali. And as you'll see, you'll add not only Kali, but all the other uh, sub dependencies as well. So here and I can see my sum file has been created and in go.mod go also more things have been added which have been indirect dependencies. So that's why the go mod uh, tool is really smart. It does everything for us. Now in a go uh, in a main.go file, you will usually write package main. By the way, we, we are planning to um, finish this project within 100 lines of code and uh, that's why it's very beginner friendly. Uh, we're not doing anything very advanced, but we'll still get all of the data from uh, the Yahoo website and also we'll be able to write it in a, in a CSV file, right? So that's a lot of stuff to do in just 100 lines of code, but that's what we'll do. Okay, so import and by now you know that I have um, imported or I, I'm going to import Kali. So that's why I'll just include it here. And then we'll obviously have our func main. Func main is where the program actually starts from. That's the origin in the main file. So that's why we'll write func main here. Now, if you remember, we had these different um, ticker prices for all the stocks. So, for example, Microsoft company is going to be get is going to get traded under the ticker price MSFT, uh, ticker name MSFT, and McDonald gets traded under the ticker name MSMCD, which is MACD. So all the, all the companies that are traded on the stock market have their own ticket price. So what we want to do is we want to create a slice for all of these ticket prices. So in my case, I'm going to scrape IBM, Microsoft, GE, uh, McDonald's, Walmart, all of these companies. And I'll just put a tab here. Sorry. I'll just quickly put tab here just to make it look uh, 
a little bit formatted all right and uh, so this is this is my ticker and the thing is I need only three things for each of these companies for each of these tickets that are trading I just need three things I need uh, the company name I need the price and I need the change in the price how much it's changed from the last time and all of these I want them to be string and in Golang the thing that enables us to create our own data types is called struct so I'm going to create a struct with the name of stock and for each stock I need just these three things nothing else you can change it if you want if you want more details you can change it but in my case I just want these three things and to be able to create a collection of these structs because we'll have so many right so many different um, stocks that we'll that we'll scrape from the website so to create a collection of these structs the best way to do that is to use a slice so we'll use a slice of stock the stock being this struct and it the slice name is stocks so that's how we'll be able to work with uh, a collection of stocks so because I'm using Kali, I have a function called new collector, which basically um, it, it initializes a new Kali uh, rephrase. It basically initializes a new instance of Kali, and that's available to me with the variable C. So I'll be able to call all the other functions of Kali by just using C. And the next function I want to call is on request. If you remember from the demo, every single time we were making a request to the web page, we were printing visiting and the URL. Now the URL changes every single time and I'll tell you why. It's because the URL is going to have the base URL, which is this, like finance.yahoo.com slash quote. But it's going to also have our ticker T here will stand for ticker which will keep changing so if you're accessing the information for Microsoft or IBM the the URL will keep changing and we want to keep printing out the URLs because we want to know which one it was not able to scrape so that's why we're printing out the URL visiting this visiting this visiting this and so on and for that we are actually using this function called C dot visit but we will use it in a loop because we want to scrape all of these variable all of these different tickers so we'll use it in a loop in a while but before that I want to uh, handle errors if I have any so because I'm going to try to request the information from the website so that's why I'll say visiting and then if there's an error I'll just say something went wrong and then I want to handle the actual visiting and scraping of the information so Kali gives you access to this function called on HTML and you have to put in the exact divs and the exact places or the, or where the children uh, divs where the information lies and I've found these for you and I've kept these for you you can just copy and paste them and all that we're doing is in the h1 we have access to the uh, company data in this child text we'll have access to price and this one we'll have access to change okay and we're going to print out all of these things so company data we're going to print out by stock.company because that's how we're assigning it so whatever data was there in the h1 we're assigning it to stock.company stock in this case is one instance of stock struct so stock struct is, stock is just one instance of that and stocks is going to be multiple stocks okay so we're creating one stock stock dot company stock dot price stock dot change that makes up one particular stock we're also printing all those values out and finally we are going to append in the stocks slice stock slice i'll just show you again stocks slice we'll just uh, append this particular stock that we just found here in the stocks slice and that's available to us now in the stocks slice so now we have a collection of all the stocks based on the stock struct that we created now we want to write all of this information all the stocks to a CSE file as you know but before that what we want to print say is we want to say c.wait because we want to make sure everything is scraped before we start writing anything to the CSV okay so that we can do with the help of collie.wait and we want to um, visit we have to make sure we want to visit all of these so that's what this function basically visits or makes the visit on our behalf it visits finance.yahoo.com slash quote 
and ticker one, ticker two, ticker one being Microsoft, ticker two being Amazon, for example, right? In our case, it's Microsoft and IBM and so on. So that's how we'll, we'll do it. And then at the end, if you remember, uh, in the, when the demo I showed you, at the end, we were just printing out like a rough, complete struct or which will have or, or the slice which had all of the uh, stocks. We were just dumping that out in the terminal. So that's what we'll also do here. We'll just dump everything out in the terminal, whatever we have scraped. Now we want to create our file. So the file that I want to create is going to be called stocks.csv. Everything will be written to the stocks.csv file. So we'll use os.create function. So if I save, hopefully, oh, it didn't happen. Usually when I save it, it brings in uh, OS the, or the fun function that I'm using. So it, it should have brought in that. And the other function, the other package that I've used is FMT. So OS package I've used, I've used FMT you now. And then we'll be using encoding slash CSV because uh, we'll be creating the CSV file. Okay, so this will create the CSV file for us and if there's an error, we'll handle the error like this. We'll say fail to create output CSV file and we'll print out the exact error. And we'll defer closing this file to the end. So this basically ensures that this function is called at the end when this main function is going to get uh, closed. To, to be able to write to the CSV, we're going to say CSV dot new writer file. Okay. And CSV basically is the encoding slash CSV package. So I'll just go ahead and get that as well. And finally, I'll just get log because I'm going to be using that quite a bit. Okay. So you have uh, you have this now, and so you you now have the new writer. You have in, initialized the new writer in, in writer, and now you're going to start writing data to the file. So the, how do you write data to the file? The first thing is you want to create those three columns. Columns in our case being uh, company name and let me see what was it. Company name, the price, and the change. These three columns is what we'll have. So first things first, we will create that. So first, we'll create headers. Headers being the column names. In our case, it's a slice of strings. Company price and change. And we will simply call our writer, which we just created here, initialized here. And we'll use the write function and write all the headers. These will form the columns of the file. And then we will range over all of our stocks. So we loop over all of the stocks that we had, these stocks that we want to now print or, or uh, put in the file or write to the file. So we'll range over all these stocks that are available to us as individual stock. And each individual stock has a company, has a price, has a change. And that is going to become a record, record for our sheet or for our CSV. And we're going to go ahead and write that record in the CSV. And finally, we will just say defer write to the crush to make sure everything has been written to the file. And that's it. That's our program. So this was 91 lines. Some of these are spaces, so uh, definitely below 100 lines of code. And now we can go ahead and test it and see if this works. Okay. So there's an issue. It says on line 92, we have a syntax error. Okay. So let's go check it out on line 92. So this is the best part about uh, Golang is that whenever you make any mistakes, it's completely okay because we can easily handle them and fix them. All we really have to do is just close this particular loop, which I had closed. So I'll just close that. And everything else was in inside main.go. So I think that that's perfect. So we'll just go ahead and run it again. Let's see. Yeah, so now we don't have that error. It's uh, as you can see, it's saying visiting and every time the URL is, cha is changing and we're printing out the URL. And all we're printing out is the company name, price and change. So it's taking quite a, because I think the internet at my end is a little slow. So it took a while to extract all the information. And then finally, we just printed out everything at the end. I hope you liked this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next.